No one likes having their things stolen, but the loss and how you deal with it can be character building. I need my wallet back, it's got my train ticket home in it! Not now, I'm introducing a video. We assume that's what these video games were going for when they took the precious inventory items we'd spent the whole game acquiring and nicked them wholesale, because otherwise that would just be cruel. Just consider the several times that video games did exactly that, and beware spoilers for the following games. And also thanks to Tom Everly off of Twitter for the idea. And my house keys! Shh. When planning your stay in the town of Silent Hill, your accommodation options may be limited, but may we recommend not staying in the Lakeview Hotel on Toluca Lake. One, it's full of horrible mannequin monsters. Two, no coffee making facilities in the rooms. Three, it has the world's worst elevator. This elevator is the worst in that it has a capacity of exactly one person. And when it says one person, it really means it. What's more, that person must weigh exactly however much protagonist James Sunderland weighs, apparently, and they can't be carrying anything else, no matter how light. That means that if you want to ride this elevator, Silent Hill 2 wants you to get rid of everything you own. Say goodbye to all your health drinks and first aid kits, all your creepy letters and music boxes, all your guns and, most importantly, your torch, the only thing standing between you and what lurks in the spooky, spooky darkness. To be honest, I'm amazed this elevator lets James keep his trousers on. If you've ever played a survival horror game, you'll know that having health kits and guns and the ability to see what's going on are the only things keeping you from freaking out like a cat who's seen a cucumber. So fair play to Silent Hill 2 for the next half hour of Silent Hill 2, which was some of the most unpleasantly tense time we've ever spent in a video game, made possible by this despicable act of thievery. We'd call it daylight robbery if you ever actually saw any daylight in Silent Hill. Why are you going on vacation there? Welcome to Degesh. I apologize for the Spartan accommodations, but you have been a naughty little shit, haven't you? Gallivanting about with a golden path. Hard time in prison doesn't get much harder than in the elaborately nightmarish Durgesh prison from Far Cry 4. 7.5 kilometers above sea level and cut into the side of a snow-battered, windswept mountain, Durgesh prison makes Alcatraz look like a delightful island getaway. If they had TripAdvisor for prisons, that would be a massive security risk. Also, Durgesh would get zero stars. Durgesh is short on guards, so instead the prison population is controlled using powerful, mind-altering narcotics. I'm on the floor. What are you doing? What is that? Ah. As the player character AJ, you end up doped out of your gourd on hallucinogenic drugs, which makes you see a sort of zombie demon stalking you? It's fine, you say. It's all in your head. Right until it stabs you. All in your head. <laughs> Oh, and don't forget that to save on construction costs, they didn't bother with one of the walls to your cell, instead just leaving it open to a sheer drop down the side of a mountain. So that's two situations where a bad trip could kill you. But one last thing. Now, RJ, I know this is hard, but consider this tough love, prison love. After all, you have a suite with a spectacular view. Hmm. Oh, and uh, one final piece of advice. I wouldn't sleep too close to the edge. What's more, when you're hurled in this slammer, the game also robs you of all your stuff. We're less concerned about losing our guns because they're ten a rupee in Kirat, but Pagan Min's goons also had the foresight to take our grappling hook, which means we can't simply rappel down the side of the mountain to freedom. Therefore, you'll have to avoid the zombie demon, seek out a piece of rope and a steel cord, and then fashion a rudimentary grappling hook before you can shimmy cautiously down the mountainside away from Durgesh prison. <laughs> Or, my cellmate Steve reckons he's found an even quicker way down. What's that, Steve? <laughs> About that grappling hook. You remember Tomb Raider 3? It's the one where the guy transforms into a f***ing terrifying spider monster at the end.
Oh, there was a clip. Okay, well, maybe some other stuff happened as well in that game. I don't remember much beyond that. Looking into it, it seems Tomb Raider 3 was another occasion when a video game noticed we had far too much good stuff knocking about in our inventory and decided to relieve us of it. Rather than have us abandon that stuff while escaping a collapsing temple, however, Tomb Raider 3 helped itself to all our items in the most embarrassing way imaginable, by having us absolutely stack it on a quad bike. <laughs> You crazy geek freak. What kind of stunt is that to pull? Nice one, Lara. Lara is then picked up by a couple of military types and dragged to a high security compound where she's relieved of everything she owns, save for one small med kit. Still, no worries, I expect you're thinking. They've probably stashed all that stuff in a locker somewhere and I'll come across it again on my way out. No biggie. Well, unfortunately, yes, biggie. Very biggie indeed, because that stuff is gone, baby, gone. This theft is compounded by the fact you can do the middle three levels in Tomb Raider 3 in any order, which means that this could be the last level you do before proceeding to the final part of the game. This would leave you woefully under-equipped to fight whatever lies ahead, which, we take this opportunity to remind you, includes horrible human face spider monsters. Ah, why would you show it again? This is extra annoying if, like us, you carefully ration all your supplies when you play games, holding health items and your best ammo in reserve just in case you need them later on. What a waste! So there was no reason for me not to have been machine gunning every single animal I came across. I mean, apart from the obvious moral and conservationism issues. But this is Lara Croft we're talking about. When is she ever worried about that? She loves that stuff. She's into it. At least when Lara Croft had all her gear nicked, she got to keep her clothes. Not so Link from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, who has all of his equipment stolen during the Stranded on Eventide Shrine quest, including his clothes. I say his clothes, the game does leave Link with his boxer shorts, which, if you ask me, seems contrary to the philosophy of the island. He could have fashioned those shorts into a sail, or used them as kindling. What I'm saying is that Link should have been fully naked, and the fact that Nintendo refuses to acknowledge my many letters on the subject shows them for the moral cowards they are. Anyway, the point of Eventide Island is to force Link to rely on his innate skills rather than his cool equipment. And to be fair to Breath of the Wild, it is initially nice to just relax for a while, chill on a beach, and remember what life is all about, which is beating a bokoblin to death with a stick. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes the best thing you can do is just relax and unplug your Switch because f Eventide Island. Look, Nintendo, I'm not carrying all this gear around because I'm some kind of vain idiot who can't fend for himself. I'm doing it because I worked hard for all that gear. Also, sticks, which you expect me to defend myself with here, break when you use them to beat a bokoblin to death. Neither of us is enjoying this. Still, look forward to this being your next hour of Breath of the Wild, with Link living off the land, scavenging what he can, and you have to assume drinking his own urine. And the fact that Nintendo refuses to acknowledge my many letters on this subject shows them for the moral cowards they are. Again. <laughs> Finally, you get all three stones into their appropriate slots, get your gear back, and get the hell off Eventide Island back to a life of working shields, good food, weapons that don't shatter into a million pieces whenever you try and use them on something harder than a blancmange, and only occasional flashbacks to the horrible things you had to do to survive in that brutal environment. <laughs> you weren't there. You'd have done the same. What is it you want from me, Constantine? I am a collector, Mr. Garrett, but there are some items that are not available for purchase. Garrett from Thief the Dark Project has light fingers, the voice of a 20 a day smoker, and like the vast majority of the population, two eyes. That all changes when you get captured and not only have all your precious thieving gear nicked, but get one of your precious eyeballs swiped as well. I need an artist like yourself. What exactly is this? Item. It is the gemstone called the Eye, for its unusual appearance. Yes, 
Midway through the game, you're offered 100,000 coin by a guy called Constantine to steal an occult item called the eye, which it turns out doesn't work unless you plug in an actual human eye, making it pretty much the opposite of an eye. This is like the medieval version of clickbait. Regardless, a job's a job. Return the eye to Constantine, and he reveals himself as the game's main baddie, the Trickster. Then he and his wood nymph lady friend pluck out one of Garrett's eyeballs to power up the relic. Go out to the woodsy lord and offer up your flesh eyes so that his eye of stone may see man fool. Quite aside from the pain, that lack of depth perception is going to be a real nightmare for someone whose job involves leaping across rooftops. Did you think those ancient phrases were mere words, man fool? When you're finally cut free, it's revealed that all your equipment has been removed from your inventory, much as your eye has been removed from your face. Though, have a quick look around the room with your remaining peeper, and you'll find your blackjack and other pieces of kit just lying around in the very room you were captured in. Come on, mate. I'm a professional thief, and your name is literally the trickster. At least hide them behind a painting or something. A few years ago, the BSAA received intel as to the whereabouts of Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer. Jill and I were ordered by the BSAA's European headquarters to apprehend him. Resident Evil 5 DLC Lost in Nightmares reunited fan favourite Jill Valentine with the newly hench human protein shake version of Chris Redfield. Chris to HQ, come in. We're at the target's location. Name a more iconic duo, I'll wait. I'm talking about Chris's two biceps. Lost in Nightmares transported the pair back to a mission that was eerily similar to the first Resident Evil game. And by eerily similar, I mean a massive ripoff. This place is apparently the Spencer Estate somewhere in Europe, but they clearly hired the exact same interior designer as the one who did the mansion in Resident Evil 1. It's got the same gothic interiors, the same elaborate crest-based security system, the same sandwich maker. <laughs> I prefer a Breville myself. This new mansion did at least have one surprise up its sleeve. Chris and Jill fall through a rickety wooden walkway and tumble into a sewer. Somehow during the fall, they both lose the vast majority of their gear, including pistols and a combat shotgun. Something that's shrugged off like it's a normal thing to happen in a fall. I'm fine, but I lost most of my gear. Same here. You're not even gonna root around in that puddle you just fell in? See if the shotgun's in there? No, apparently not, because you spend the next 15 minutes almost completely weaponless, such that Chris and Jill have to lure enemies into elaborate traps instead of shooting them. Still, complete the Lost in Nightmares DLC and the pair escape completely unscathed. Yes, I'm still talking about Chris's two biceps. Oh, Jill? Yeah, Jill dies or something. What? Drop your laser sword, Jedi, and maybe we'll spare your life. Or perhaps you'd like to take your chances. In Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, you are a student at the Jedi Academy of the title. This is a school for aspiring space wizards that teaches you all the important Jedi skills. Force powers, diplomacy, being a sarcastic jerk. I sense a disturbance in the Force. You always sense a disturbance in the Force. I think that's a dark side power. And of course, you'll also learn to use a lightsaber, an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. <laughs> As you can see, elegance itself. But I wouldn't get too attached to that lightsaber if I were you, thanks to the bit in the game where, you guessed it, Jedi Academy decides it's time you did without your lightsaber for a while. So, my Jedi friend, what do you think of our accommodations? This time it's because you've been captured by a crime lord who's confiscated your saber, presumably so he can spend some time turning it on and off again and enjoying the sound. If I catch you, I'll have to shoot you. After all, you are an escaped prisoner. Still, we're a Jedi, right? Magical space wizard, so this shouldn't be a problem. Well, it isn't a problem if you're a dark side Jedi, because you can basically just waltz out of here, force choking and force lightning-ing everyone in your path. 
If you went with light side powers, on the other hand, you can look forward to some awkward stealth, getting shot a lot because you're accustomed to your saber automatically blocking incoming fire, and a lot more frantic shooting as you murder your way out using blasters, which we remind you, Jedi's get super snooty about. <laughs> At least the sequence doesn't last long, and soon you're back to using your elegant lightsaber, wielding its delicate blade like a conductor's baton. Exquisite. Thanks for watching this video about the times when games just came and took all your stuff like they were entitled to. Why not watch another Outside Xbox video while you're here? If I can interest you in this one, it's about jerk anti-heroes who were much more anti than hero. That makes sense. I don't know if it does. And then this one here is from Outside Extra and it's about the games that we all think about sometimes at night because we just still can't get them out of our heads. They are quite good. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this video.